The equation we're given is of the type that we'll need to use implicit differentiation for any questions related to the slope of the tangent line or the derivative in general. And that's because y is either difficult or impossible to separate or to isolate. We're also given some information that will be useful in part D that involves parameterizing this curve. But I won't mention that uh, anymore until we get to that point. However, when we do have to parameterize, this is the information that's going to be useful, namely the derivative of y with respect to x can be taken as the ratio of the derivative of y with respect to time and the derivative of x with respect to time. But for the moment, let's turn our attention back to part A, which simply asks us to find dy dx using implicit differentiation. So we're going to write that like this, where we take the derivative of both sides of the equation that we're given. <coughs> This will give us 2y dy dx using the chain rule. Derivative of the 2 is going to be 0, so it's a use of the product rule. And we get uh, y plus x dy dx. Now again, when we use implicit differentiation, the key insight is that we gather all the dy dx terms together and then solve for dy dx. In this case, we just divide both sides by the 2y minus x. That goes away, and we have dy dx equals y over 2y minus x. They gave us that as the thing we needed to derive. So we have further confirmation that what we've done is correct because they've given us the form of the derivative. So now we move on to the case where they'd like to know what points on the curve have a tangent line with a slope of one half. And so we set the derivative equal to one half to see what constraints that imposes on y and x. Simply cross multiplying uh, leads us to 2y equals 2y minus x, which it further implies that x must be 0. We use this information back in the original equation. To show, <clears throat> let's see, that um, y squared equals 2 plus 0 times y, or in other words, y squared equals 2, which further implies that y equals plus or minus the square root of 2. It's important to note that we do have both solutions, both the positive and the negative square root of 2 satisfy this equation, this y squared equals 2 equation. And so we already had the constraint that x was 0, and so we know the points that satisfy it. Okay. Are 0 root 2 and 0 negative root 2. Now in part C, it's a similar thing that we're talking about. Namely, they tell us a constraint on the slope of tangent lines, but they want us to demonstrate that there are no such points. So without knowing exactly how that's going to proceed, we know that we need to start with the constraint they've given us, namely that y over 2y minus x has to equal 0. And that means that y must equal 0 keeping in mind that when it equals 0, we can't have the denominator also equal to 0. So let's make use of this uh, 
constraint and go back to the original equation. We have uh, 0 squared has to equal 2 plus x times 0. But that would imply 0 equals 2. And rather than just saying that's nonsense, what we say is which is um, not true for any choice of x. And th thus, there are no points, hence. There are no x-y pairs. On the curve. With tangent. line slope equal to zero or horizontal. Finally part D now they've given us the fact that y and x can be independently parametrized. Um, let's just write that down. They're giving us x of t and y of t and we're also given, I'm just going to repeat what we have up at the top, that t equals 5, y equals 3, dy dt equals 6. Okay, so now we're going to use this relationship that expresses dy dx as the ratio of two other derivatives of the y and the x both res with respect to time. And since the expression asks us to find dx dt, we'll just write that we're asked to find dx dt at t equals 5. And we know that I'm just rearranging this expression that it's equal to dy dt at t equals 5 divided by uh, dy dx again at t equals 5. So what uh, information can we apply into this equation? We can say that um, they told us that dy dt is 6, so this here is 6 dy dx, we're, we're going to say is that, I'm going to rewrite this expression using the information they gave us. So let's restate it. dx dt, t equals 5, equals 6 over, now, dy dx at t equals 5. Well, at t equals 5, we were told that y was 3. And we know that dy dx is y over 2y minus x. So I'm going to write it as 3 over 6 minus x. But I can also find out what x is. I can go back to the original equation, solving for x. I get... Uh, 3 squared equals 2 plus 3x, or in other words, x equals 7 thirds. So putting this back in, I have that uh, the thing they want us to find, the x dt at t equals 5, equals 6 over... 3 over 6 minus 7 thirds. I can write that 
as um, 6 minus 7 thirds is 11 thirds. So this is really saying 6 over 3 times 11 thirds, or in other words, 22 thirds.